Welcome back, everybody. Turns out most of us lose sleep at night worrying about money. 83% yeah. of Americans have at least one money fear keeping them up, and almost 60%, get this, would rather discuss the birds and the bees with a stranger than their personal financial situation. Uh, I would. That'd be great. <laughs> Matthew Holbrook is a financial and insurance advisor with Country Financial, and he's here to help you make a plan so that you can relax and get your Z's at See, night. Tiffany Good talks to about the birds and the bees to every stranger she meets. So yeah. no I wasn't going to say that. You but. need to teach your child. Send <laughs> <laughs> you need them to learn about finances, send them to Matthew. Well, yeah. That's where I take over. <laughs> Great to see you. Good to see you again, too. Thanks why for having me again. Why is it that, that as Americans, that money keeps us up at night? Where do I start? Yeah. Um, to look at the stock market where that is right now. Uh, look at even for uh, when people are growing up, they'll, they have a date to talk about the birds and the bees, but you don't have a date to talk about finances. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know why that is where it's, it's not something we're teaching our kids about more often, uh, but we're not. And then for uh, you're kind of going into the world blind where, okay, I guess I'm supposed to do this because I saw this on TV kind of like this, but nobody talks about it. So it's kind of it's one of those things that people do need to talk about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember growing up, we didn't talk about money or finances in our family. The first mm -hmm. time I'd had a conversation with, was with a boyfriend's father once who, you know, that was a very open conversation in their family. But one of the biggest concerns with people is retiring comfortably. Mm -hmm. and, and that's a conversation that needs to be had too. And that's one thing you really help people with. Yeah, and it's a lot of people when they do come in, it is scary. I mean, it's you're talking about finances. It's something you don't really do like you had mentioned. Uh, the big thing I do with clients, I'll have them sit down. They kind of tell me where they where they are, and it's when they do get to my office, it is a little odd because then they'll just tell you everything. It's like, okay, let's slow down. Fears. Yeah, absolutely. So it's me, or, or it's, it's where I come in. I take all that information. We sit down and kind of make a goal from there. Mm -hmm. um, even if you do have something set up, it's uh, everything needs tweaking yeah. that we do. So it's uh, we'll sit down and make a plan and go go from there. As it relates to retiring, a lot of people are fortunate to have a 401k mm -hmm. or something similar type benefit through work. Mm -hmm. What should our 401k goals be? And it probably depends on our age to some degree. Yeah, but I, what I always tell people, if you're going to do one thing, at least go up to that match point. So if they're matching you up to $11,000 of that, the 401k, go up to that match point. That's free money. That's yeah. an awesome rate of return. Um, at, once you do get up to that match point, work with something called a Roth IRA, put money in that, and then come back to the 401k. So that would be one big advice if you're just going to take one thing away from this segment, just to, to do that. Go up to that match point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And with the Roth, you can only put in, what, 2500 a year or something? 5500 Fifty-five. Well, it's changed. But it's not right? a huge it, amount. It, so correct. You know, you can fill it up, you know, and, and feel like you've done something really great. Yes. You know, when, when you're talking about doing all these kinds of things and just living your day-to-day -day life, the, one of the biggest things you need to do is have a budget, and it can mm -hmm. be easier than you think, right? Mm -hmm. What are some of your favorite tips, I guess, that you give people on how to manage or have a budget that works for you? Yeah, uh, what I do with the clients where they'll come in and it's, you can do one of two things. What I'd like you to do is print off those credit card statements and kind of yeah. figure out where the money is going. If you're feeling a little bit more you mean tech, like how much you're spending on groceries versus yeah, groceries, versus. restaurants, car, okay. insurance, anything. Um, another nice thing you can do if you're feeling a little bit more tech savvy and you don't want to sit down and do that homework, you can download apps. For example, BillGuard. That's one app that I even use. Okay. It just puts it into categories for you, so you can see. Okay, I spent this much on restaurants. I spent this much here, and every month that updates, so you can actually see your budget, how much money coming in, and that makes it pretty easy for the client. What's it called again? BillGuard. Okay. Bill Not Guard. to endorse that all too no, much, but, but right. But it helps. But it's great. Mm -hmm. People want something that's easy to use. Mm -hmm. Emergency funds. I know you're a big fan of, and Absolutely. a lot of people wonder how much. What should mm -hmm. my goal be for an emergency fund? Mm -hmm. How much money? should I have set aside? Mm -hmm. Ideally, I like to have 10 grand in there. That's the, the bare minimum. Yeah. If something goes, especially if you have a house, 10 grand, that's not that much money. As you probably know where, say, a water heater goes out or I don't even know, what do we just have happen? The garage door, something happened with the spring. I don't know a lot about garage doors, but I know how to pay yeah. a lot of money to get that fixed. Yeah. It's, otherwise, we can't get the, gar the cars animal out. animal has to go to the vet. That can add up real fast. Exactly. That, yep. <laughs> so, so 10 grand is what I like to see in there. Mm -hmm. A lot of people say, well, that seems like a lot of money. Well, not really when you look at how much things cost these days. Mm -hmm. Especially a mortgage. Mm -hmm. If you fall behind with that or mm -hmm. lose a job or something like that. When do people, when should someone start working with a financial advisor like yourself? And, and do you charge a fee? To I, do I do not charge a fee. Uh, I have clients come in all the time where it's, 
they'll say, well, I'm so far behind, I'm behind the eight ball, I don't know what to do. We'll work on budgeting and just get that in order. Maybe that takes a year, maybe that takes two years, but once we get that figured out, then we can go and kind of do the more, the more fun stuff on there. Yeah. Um, but it's, uh, no, I, I don't charge a fee for people to come in and talk to me. Okay. It's <laughs> wonderful because people can talk to you about everything. Budgets, mm -hmm. yeah. emergency funds, retirement. What's keeping you up at night? You can talk to Matt about it. He's at Country Financial. If you visit countryfinancial.com slash Matthew.Holbrook, you can find out more about meeting with him. Again, there's no fee to do that and talk about your financial situation. His office is on North Oakland Avenue in Shorewood. Call him at 414 332 2137. Great to see you. Great to see Thank you guys. You so Thank you.